Hello and welcome to FYI Weekly, your official source for the latest news and information from the City of Greensboro. Greensboro water customers will receive a copy of the annual drinking water quality report in the mail from the City's Water Resources Department. The City regularly monitors drinking water according to federal and state regulations to ensure the production of high quality water. The report includes the water quality lab data collected from January 1st to December 31st, 2017. The annual drinking water quality report describes drinking water sources, testing conducted on the water, substances detected, health effects information related to violations of drinking water standards, and other information of interest. The annual report is a performance measure of the quality of water supplied by the city against the compliance standards established by the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency and the North Carolina Division of Water Resources. To obtain a copy of the report in English or Spanish, call the contact center at 336-373-2489 or visit the city's website. Limited copies are also available at various public library branches. The city's Neighborhood Development Department has remodeled its home initiatives under the umbrella of Housing Connect GSO. Housing Connect GSO aims to help home buyers and homeowners make informed choices in selecting and buying a home, maintaining and keeping the home, as well as understanding down payment and closing cost assistance obligations. These services were upgraded by the City Council to include more financial assistance to low- and moderate-income individuals and families, as well as broaden the eligibility requirements and loan terms. Housing Connect GSO covers home ownership education and outreach, home ownership counseling, financial assistance, and home ownership collaborations. For more information about Housing Connect GSO, visit the city's website or call Rhonda Enoch, the city's housing counselor, at 336-373-4146. The city of Greensboro is partnering with the Carroll Companies and Guilford County to move forward with a plan to build the Eugene Street parking deck. The project will be constructed near the corner of North Eugene and Bellmead Streets, south of the Greensboro Grasshoppers First National Bank field. City Manager David Parrish says the city's role is to provide public infrastructure that supports and encourages community investment. The Eugene Street Deck will make an immediate impact and support the future growth of downtown Greensboro for projects such as Project Slugger and future Carroll Company developments. As part of this plan, the city will purchase property from Guilford County and work closely with the Carroll Companies on future development. Guilford County has expressed its support for this economic development project. The new plans call for the parking deck to sit further back from the streets. A final deal between the city, county and Carroll companies is expected this summer with the project beginning in the fall. The Eugene Street parking deck will be constructed, operated and owned by the city of Greensboro. In an effort to help each of us improve our quality of life, the city has partnered with Cone Health for a series of brief and informative videos designed to inspire you to make better choices when it comes to healthy living. Let's check in with our friends from Cone Health for today's news for your health. Hi, my name is Kathy Clayton and I'm a clinical therapist with Cone Health Employee Assistance Counseling Program. Today we're going to be talking about decreasing your stress and ways of managing stress in your life. For some people that can be stressful just talking about stress, so let's start out by taking a deep breath in and breathing out. Okay, let's begin. So what is stress? It's your body's reaction to any kind of new or difficult situation. Um, what happens is the cortisol level rises in the brain to get you through that stressful time. It's that fight or flight hormone that rises in the brain. And that's great when you get through that, it's done, it's over with. But lots of people kind of stay stressed out all the time, so their body is in that constant state of stress. So what causes stress? Uh, change. And that happens every day, all day long, to everybody. Uh, change can be anything from new relationships to a new job, uh, moving, uh, things of that nature that are just typical in life. So change causes stress and, and then we have to learn how to handle that. 
you know, the holidays really cause more stress than any other time of the year. So whenever um, the holidays are coming around, there's a change in routine. So the holidays are just really more difficult in general. So it's just really good to be planned in advance during the holidays so that you can uh, decide and set limits on your budget, on where you're going to spend your time. Learning how to say no to over committing during the holidays is really important. So what can we do about stress in our everyday lives? So one of the very first things you need to learn how to do is breathe. And that sounds simple because we breathe all the time, but you really need to be intentional about breathing. So the thing that you need to learn how to do is called abdominal breathing or diaphragmatic breathing. And that is placing your hand on your belly and your hand on your chest. You're just gonna practice rising your belly more than your chest so that you can uh, feel your body taking in more oxygen. So let's do this together. You're gonna breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth again and try to make your belly rise more than your chest. So that's called diaphragmatic breathing, and that can be very helpful because your body realizes that you've just given it more oxygen, and that in turn gives more oxygen to your brain, to your heart, to your muscles, and it just gives your body the message that you can relax, that you've got this under control. So mindfulness also is a strategy that you can use for uh, coping with stress, and mindfulness involves just uh, being intentional about being very present in the moment and as a result your body just calms down because you're not thinking about um, where I need to be next or fighting traffic getting home uh, you're just able to be very very present and your body gets that message that you don't have to be worried in that moment so another strategy that a lot of people uh, use is pro called progressive muscle relaxation and that is where you consciously tense your muscles and teach them how to relax. So let's just start by, uh, let's just use a fist. So we're just gonna take our fist and we're gonna tighten it really, really tight and hold it for a period of time, like five to seven seconds. And then you're gonna gently relax that muscle group and just let it relax. And then the next thing you want to do, just take a slow, deep breath in between and maybe go to your shoulders because a lot of people carry stress in their shoulders. I do. So your body recognizes what it feels like to be tense and what it feels like to be relaxed. And basically, you're being the boss of your body and training it to be both tense and then to learn how to be relaxed. You could do this anytime, anywhere. I do it at my desk quite often. I think that most people don't know that if you exercise just for 45 minutes, that it releases six to eight hours of serotonin and dopamine in your brain, which is those, those hormones that kind of give you that sense of well-being and that, that all is well in the world. That's a great way to reduce your stress. Then there are other things like um, taking a nap, taking a walk. Um, spending time with friends is always a great thing. Prayer, being prayerful or mindful is always a great thing to do. Meditation is good uh, for reducing stress in your body. Um, gardening, uh, cooking, whatever your hobbies are, those are always great things to do. Just engaging in things that bring you pleasure and bring you joy are the ways that you can reduce stress in your body. I hope these techniques will be helpful in learning to take better care of yourself and managing your stress because if you can do this, then you'll in turn be able to take better care of others. For more information on this or for other services that are available, please visit our website at conehelp.com stress. Thank you for joining me today. Again, this is Kathy Clayton. Have a great day. The latest growth and development trends report is out. Find out what's trending with a very high score among Greensboro residents. We'll have that story and more news coming up after the break. Stay with us. Welcome back to FYI Weekly. 
The planning department's latest growth and development trends report highlights some of the work that has been done in preparation for the update to the city's comprehensive plan, Connections 2025. This process, called Planet GSO, will create a vision for the city's growth and development over the next 20 years. This trends report summarizes some of the most important data and trends shaping Greensboro. A few examples include a 23 percent decrease in manufacturing employment from 2000 to 2015. In a recent survey, two-thirds of Greensboro residents say having sidewalks and places to walk to are very important in deciding where to live compared to only half of the national respondents. Household size appears to be shrinking. 67 percent of Greensboro households consist of one to two people. Planning Director Sue Schwartz says we are living in an age of rapid change, but that will allow Greensboro to continue to grow into a more diverse and vibrant city. Walkability and the changing economy are not just buzzwords or fads. They are signaling a desire and a need for more options for where and how people live. The Trends Report and more information about Planet GSO is available on the city's website. The City of Greensboro's new Human Resources Director is longtime employee Jemiah Waterman. He has served as the Interim Director since February following the retirement of former Director Connie Hammond. Assistant City Manager Chris Wilson says Jemiah recognizes the importance of culture and how it affects everything from recruiting and retention to performance. We're also excited what new forward-thinking initiatives he can bring to help the entire organization. Waterman joined the city as a member of its legal staff in 2007 before serving as the human resources attorney and senior human resources manager. A Dudley High School graduate, Waterman holds an undergraduate degree from Howard University and a law degree from the Duke University School of Law. Prior to joining the city, Waterman served as staff attorney for legal aid of North Carolina. Licensed to practice law in North Carolina, Waterman is a member of the Greensboro Bar Association, North Carolina Bar Association, and the National Forum for Black Public Administrators. To assist with the recovery efforts, a legal aid hotline has been established for survivors of the tornado that touched down in Greensboro in mid-April. Free legal aid advice is available for FEMA benefits appeals, other disaster benefits, insurance claims, home repair contractors, replacing wills or other legal documents, consumer scams, mortgage foreclosure, and landlord-tenant disputes. The toll-free legal aid hotline number is 1-833-242-3549. Legal professionals are available Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. This service is a partnership between FEMA, American Bar Association Young Lawyers Division, Legal Aid North Carolina, and the North Carolina Bar Association. In an effort to spotlight and celebrate local artists, business owners, community builders, and essentially the next generation of leaders, the city is proud to partner with Action Greensboro to introduce our Made in Greensboro series. This day, we place the spotlight on LGBTQ advocate IVG. IVG moved to the triad in 1999 on a basketball scholarship to Elon University. But she found her community a few miles to the east in a gay club in downtown Greensboro called The Palms. Ivy says it changed her life as she realized there were more people like her. In her words, being that chick in the suit is not always easy. Ivy is a leader in the LGBTQ community, serving as the community outreach coordinator for the Guilford Green Foundation, or GGF. In her role at GGF, Ivy is building new relationships in the community and rebuilding old ones. It's an important position as the nonprofit is currently working to expand and offer programming. Ivy is also passing along her professional skills by teaching a hospitality and customer service program at the nonprofit Welfare Reform Liaison Project. The program focuses on helping individuals gain skills they can use to find a full-time job.
To learn more about Made in Greensboro or to see more images taken by photographers Jerry Walford and Scott Mothersbaugh, visit the Action Greensboro website at madeingso.com. The Civil Rights Museum in downtown Greensboro will host two thought-provoking programs about the U.S. Constitution. We'll tell you all about the significance of these programs coming up after the break. Stay with us. Welcome back to FYI Weekly. Independence Day will take on a new meaning for visitors to the Civil Rights Museum as a series of discussions will be conducted about the Declaration of Independence and the 14th Amendment. Joining me now to give us an overview of both programs is Dr. Will Harris. He is a professor at the University of Pennsylvania, heading up the initiative for the new Constitution. Hello, Dr. Harris. Welcome Hi. to the show. Thank you. And good welcome to, to Greensboro. And good to be in Greensboro, too. Yes. Now, July 4th, you will be presenting United States 1.0, the Declaration of Independence as a provocation for the civil rights movement. What do you want folks to take away from that program? Well, one of the things we want to do with this uh, approach is, is to set out three, three um, uh, phases of constitution making in the United States, three founding periods. Uh, the first one is July 4th, or that period, uh, focus on the Declaration. We call it the Declaration of Independence. It's actually the Declaration of the United States uh, in, by its own terms. Uh, and uh, what we want to take away from that um, is, for one thing, um, there really isn't a revolution at that point. Uh, that revolution is deferred for a long time in this country, uh, and I would say ultimately uh, that revolution begins to occur at the time of the 14th Amendment uh, in 1868. But at the time of the Declaration, what is very important, I think, is for people to actually read it. Most of the text is about painting a picture, making a portrait, of bad government on the, on the principle that um, people have a right to good government. And so we start our nation's existence. It's also where we get our name, the United States of America, and we get our name at a point when we are arguing against bad government, systematically bad government, and for good government. And that seems to be very important, again, as part of the civil rights movement. Okay, well, that's very fascinating, and you're giving us a great history lesson. In addition to that presentation, you're also looking at the 14th Amendment as the foundation for civil rights. What is the significance of that? Well, we're calling that United States 3.0, um, the third founding. Of course, there's the one that comes in between. That's the Madisonian founding, where we actually get a constitutional document and a constitutional plan. We'll be focusing on that in September, the usual time for looking at the Constitution of 1787. Um, but as far as the 14th Amendment is concerned, what's important about that is the 14th Amendment is, is really the peace treaty that pulls the American nation back together. Essentially what happens with the Constitution of the second founding, the 1787 Constitution, is it fails utterly. I mean, how could anything that produces a war among the citizens, a war, a war among states and governments, um, north and south and all around, how could anything that produces that kind of violence and conflict not be a failure? And so the 14th Amendment is the response to that failure to build America back again. A hundred years later, in the 1960s, the Civil Rights Movement is a strategic attempt to make the words of the 14th Amendment true in practice. So with that, you're talking about the Constitution, something that we should all know about as Americans and you're saying it's the new Constitution. This is an initiative that you're heading up. What is new about it after 150 years of being in existence? Good question. What's very interesting, of course, is that if you've had something for 100 years and you haven't used it, and you have tried to suppress it, then when you look at it fresh, it looks new. And essentially, right after the uh, 14th Amendment was ratified 100 years, 150 years ago from, from, uh, the, the, from July the 9th, uh, there was every force within the country put against its implementation. Uh, it, was trans it was interpreted differently, it was narrowed in its impact, and, we, and then of course it was completely countered with Jim Crow, which was a, a national thing, not just a southern thing. It's a whole regime of, of suppression uh, and, and, and discrimination. Uh, so 
once the 14th Amendment was put in place, it was immediately suppressed. It's new because anyone who wants to look and see it, it's fresh again. And we need to bring it back because one of the standards for understanding when a country is, is, is in great trouble is that it's out of sync with its constitution. And we're deeply out of sync with our 14th Amendment constitution, probably with, with, all the, with the other two as well. Okay, now we're wrapping this up. Um, before we go, can you tell me uh, why is it important for this work and this examination of the Constitution to be happening in Greensboro as opposed to our nation's capital or even Philadelphia where you're from? Yeah, very good question. Um, well, in Philadelphia, I can tell you I've spent a couple of decades trying to get them to understand where the Constitution is and they think, seem to think it's not much more than a legal document. Um, I've uh, tried to get them to understand what a revolution is and they think it's about a war. Um, so I'm not sure that we have the, quite the context for developing this idea in Philadelphia and I'm not sure why it would be there in the first place. Washington is about government. The 14th Amendment Constitution, the new Constitution is about the people. It's about citizenship. It's about establishing the human being as this type of human being who, who has a role in a country like this. Uh, not just good behavior, which is the way we usually uh, dismiss citizenship, but about control, about ownership, about activity, about presence, all of that sort of thing. Uh, and so Greensboro, because of the sit-in movement, think about it, when any, whenever there is a demonstration, wherever there is nonviolent action, people recur back to the Greensboro sit-ins over and over again. When I go to other parts of the world and I, and I tell them what I'm doing, they say, oh yeah, I know about the Woolworths. This place is famous. Maybe local people don't realize that as much as they might. But this is a place where regular people can take control of their government, can understand what a constitution is really about, especially from this perspective of a re revitalized citizenship. Well, Dr. Harris, certainly we could go on all day. This is so fascinating. Thank you. But folks can actually take this in on July 4th for the provocation for the Civil Rights Movement, July 7th, the foundation for the Civil Rights Movement from 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. at our Civil Rights Museum. I am sure there will be a full house. I hope so. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you so this much. Was a very, very nice. Nice to have you here. Mm -hmm. Stay tuned for a little-known fact about Greensboro as we tell you something about the city. That's coming up after the break. Stay with us. Welcome back. One way to stay informed about what's happening in the city is by attending or tuning in to city council meetings. The Greensboro City Council meetings are open to the public, but if you can't attend, we broadcast the meetings live right here on GTN, and we stream the meetings live on the city's website. Council meetings take place at 5.30 p.m. on the first and third Tuesdays of the month on Level 2 of the Melvin Municipal Office Building, located at 300 West Washington Street. The first meeting of the month includes public comments and special presentations. Meetings on the third Tuesday of the month focus on public hearings and city business. The fourth Tuesday is reserved for a meeting as needed. To review the council meeting schedule and agendas, please visit the city's website. Here's an opportunity to learn a little something about the city. The city council voted to approve changes to the city's Home Buyer Down Payment and Closing Cost Assistance Program, or DPA. Effective immediately, the program now offers more financial assistance to low- and moderate-income individuals and families. It also broadens the eligibility requirements and loan terms. The goal is to allow more than first-time home buyers to be eligible to apply. If the home purchased is located in one of the city's seven redevelopment areas listed on the city's website, DPA will now provide up to $10,000 in down payment assistance and closing costs as a five-year forgivable loan at 0% interest to first-time home buyers. If the home buyer remains in the home for five years, the loan will not need to be repaid. The loan is forgiven at 20% per year for each full year the home buyer lives in the home. Also, if a home buyer purchases a home in one of the city's redevelopment areas, an additional $5,000 bonus is available for down payment assistance, and the first-time home buyer requirement is waived. Loan repayment rules are the same as that for first-time home buyers. To find out if you qualify for down payment assistance, call Rhonda Enoch, the city's housing counselor, at 336-373-4146. 
Coming up after the break, we'll showcase our department spotlight. But first, prepare to mark your calendar for all the great events happening this week on the town. Hey, this is Josh. It's July in Greensboro, and we have First Friday and family fun activities happening on the town this weekend. Head down for a series of special events that happen during the first Friday of every month. Green Hill will host live music by Abigail Dowd from 6.30 to 7.30 p.m. and from 7.30 to 8.30 p.m. You can see Greensboro-based artist Mary Beth Boone in action as she demonstrates various printmaking processes. This event is free and open to the public. Learn more on the Green Hill website at greenhillnc.org. This Friday, Lake Townsend hosts the Friday Night Bass Tournament from 6 to 10 p.m. There's a $10 entry fee per person, payable day of the tournament. A prize will go to the person who catches the heaviest bass. Hang up that gone fishing sign and head over. For more information on the tournament or Lake Townsend, visit greensboro-nc.gov lakes. It's not too late to purchase tickets for the 2018 USA Gymnastics Championship, the National Championship for Acrobatic Gymnastics, Rhythmic Gymnastics, and Trampoline and Tumbling. These performances will determine who will make the junior and senior U.S. national teams. Performances will take place on Friday and Saturday at 11 a.m. at the Greensboro Coliseum. To purchase tickets, go to greensborocoliseum.com. On Sunday, enjoy the movie Robin Hood Men in Tights starting at 3 p.m. at the Carolina Theater as part of the 11th Annual Summer Film Festival. This year, the movie will be shown in The Crown on the third floor of the theater while renovations are being conducted in the auditorium. Seating will be extremely limited, so purchase your tickets early to ensure admission. Check out carolinatheater.com for more information on the Summer Film Festival. End your weekend on a high note at the Music for a Sunday Evening in the Park concert at Gateway Gardens. Low Key, a classic rock and pops band, will perform first at 6 p.m. and will be followed by Gate City Divas, a blues, R&B, jazz, soul group starting at 7.15 p.m. Bring a blanket or lawn chairs and a picnic and enjoy. This event is free and will continue all summer long. Go to greensboro-nc.gov slash musep for a complete list of upcoming performances. Keep watching FYI Weekly right here on GTN to find out more about events happening on the town. Welcome back. The City of Greensboro has 22 departments and several divisions committed to serving you, our residents and visitors. Let's go behind the scenes in our department spotlight. This week we place the spotlight on energy in the park. This is Greensboro Parks and Recreation's free summer playground program. It's available in seven neighborhoods from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Monday through Thursdays until August 9th. Rising 1st through 15-year-olds are invited to take part in supervised sports, games, crafts, and free lunch. Parents or guardians can register their children at any of the following participating playgrounds. Playground supervisors are CPR and first aid certified. The program will not be offered on July 4th and may be canceled due to severe rain or extreme heat. For more information, visit the city's website or contact Mel Melton at 336-373-7502. On the other side of the break is this week's Way to Go GSO shout out. Stay with us. As we draw to a close, we always want to end on a positive note with our Way to Go GSO shout out. This week's shout out goes to the Fire Department's 71st recruiting class. 18 fire recruits will begin their career as a professional firefighter with the Greensboro Fire Department. Upon completion of the 26-week academy and successful completion of North Carolina State Firefighter Certification, the 71st recruit class will become sworn probationary firefighters. The group graduated on Friday, June 29th at the Finch Memorial Chapel on the campus of Greensboro College. Congratulations to all. That concludes this edition of FYI Weekly, but you can easily stay connected to the latest city news by linking to us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram. For all of us here at the City of Greensboro, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.